and then we'd heat stones in the fire pit and pick them up with antlers, put them in the pots and or under, depending on the type of heating or cooking they're doing. So there are two storage rooms over there. Corn was found in both, and one over there. If you look on the ceiling, you can see a pictograph up there, red hematite, or part of one, traditionally created by grinding the hematite, mixing it with fat, with urine, and sometimes with blood. You see quite a lot of soot. A great deal of it is exfoliated. These caves are made out of Gila conglomerate, it's called, and sandstone and siltstone. And you see that it's sedimentary and layer upon layer of it. Geologists say the caves are created by a large river and lateral erosion loosening these layers and they'd exfoliate over the course of well, a couple million years. Cool. Yeah. Now over there you can see cliff varnish, and that's created by water literally seeping from the tops of these caves, going through the stone, and it deposits manganese, which oxidizes. Various microorganisms grow upon it. Now, are you, is that the white that we're talking no, about? No, that's calcium carbonate. It functions as a glue in this material. But that black streak right there. The black there, streak? Yeah, that's cliff varnish. Now you can see it up here, on the, on the ceiling up here. Last week I had a torrential downpour and the rain curls around the lip of this cave and starts moving down. Oh, so you're in. getting like a shower. After a while it, get, it got so far I had to move. You know? <laughs> but it seems to defy gravity. Now, of course, everything does. But, mm -hmm. uh, Actually, it's capillary action. The electrostatic charge in the water moves the water along that gradient of lichen. Oh, cool. You know, just like with a coffee filter, if you put a drop of dye, it spreads yeah, out. Yeah, like even so. Yeah, the same principle with the phenomena here. Very interesting.